This is a gospel from the Gospel of John that's very powerful. It, it upended Peter for a while, and it might even upend us because we ask, is this the way the king of the universe is behaving? So it begins with chapter 13 and verse 1. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already decided that Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, would betray Jesus. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from supper, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin, began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, he put on his robe and he reclined again and said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord. And you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, slaves are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. When he had gone out, when Judas had gone out, Jesus said, now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. God has been glorified in him. God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Notice the number of times that some part of the word glorify is used after Judas leaves to unfold the betrayal. Now is the Son of Man glorified. What a curious juxtaposition that Jesus makes between a moment that's going to unroll for his betrayal and it's the time of his glorified. God has been glorified in him, glorified in him, will glorify him in himself, glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciple, if you have love for one another. My brothers and sisters, this is the gospel. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.
over the years of being a pastor, only once did we actually do the washing of the feet. Some parishioners lined up on either side, and we did that, and it was uncomfortable. <laughs> We're not used to doing that. So I'm thinking maybe the secret of the feet is in the hands. Can you just now just lift your hands up and look at them? These are God's instruments of kindness, of greeting, of love, tenderness, of creativity. So we are invited to be co-creators with God, to use our talents, and even just the talent of being you. That's the best talent there is, to be yourself, not anybody else, not being distracted by what people think, just being you. If you do that and you let go of the impact that you think would happen by what others think, then you become free to just smile, use your hands for kindness, for clasping those needed, those that look for support and for comfort. The essence of what this is about, this is the evening of community. Thank you for coming to become part of this community that's expressing itself tonight in this ritual, this time of communion, fellowship, and kindness, and greeting, and some laughter, and smiles. All the things that demonstrate that what Jesus wants us to do is to discover in the midst of what's ever coming against you. Glory of the Lord is coming upon you. Like the angels when the birth of Jesus was announced to the shepherds. Glory to God on the highest and peace to men on whom God's favor rests. So from the start to the finish, as it were, but like Yogi Berra said, it ain't over till it's over, and for us, it's never over. Christ's life is never over. It gets better. The passageway that we'll discover tomorrow in the seven last words, the passageway to life passes through suffering, passes through the glory. At no time is Jesus ever a victim of what's going on or what's about to happen. And that's good for us to remember, that at no time it's whatever is challenging you in your life. You're not a victim. When we were doing a group, Gina and I had uh, talked about being a victim and not. And a woman coined the word victimese. I've been speaking victimese over the past week. Don't let that happen. These are wonderful, glorious days. We're grateful to God that Jesus came, that Jesus gave us on the night before he was betrayed the gift of communion and the Eucharist that we're going to celebrate. So Lord, I just pray that you might touch our hearts with the glimmer and the joy of communion, of fellowship, of wisdom. We need a world that is trusting in our own interior wisdom. And though we see atrocity and learn about them, at no time do we stop loving our enemy. At no time do we stop the joy that can come, because even in the midst of the most grave darkness in our life, God is being glorified inside. That's our prayer, Lord Jesus, that you would be glorified in your holy name we pray.